Hello and welcome to our first installment of our Driftwood Public Library Adult Science Night. Of course, it's not nighttime right now, um, it is daytime, but normally I would be doing this in the evening time at one of our local bars, the Black Squid. Um, but thanks to COVID-19 and our pandemic, we have had to cancel this Adult Science Night and now I am performing it on the YouTubes. Yay! So, so what, I'm gonna do what do you need to make cheese? Well, you need milk, you need acid, you need salt for flavor, you need rennet to help with the coagulation, um, but you don't have to have rennet. In fact, the cheeses that I am going to show you today do not use rennet. They are solely based on acids. Um, and again, these are not, you're not gonna make a cheddar cheese, you're not making a Swiss, you're not making brie. We are making a, you know, farmer's cheeses. We are making soft cheeses. We are making easy cheese. And that is our first cheese, fromage facile. Um, slotted spoon for when it comes time to do all of the stirring so that you can see the curds and whey separating. All right. My name is Rachel Humpert. I'm the volunteer coordinator at Driftwood Public Library, and although I am not a scientist, I get to play one for the library. Um, and I wanted to give a quick shout out to our usual business partners in this fun experimenting, and that is the Black Squid Beer House here in Lincoln City, Oregon. Um, they have hosted us for the last two years in our adult science nights, and we couldn't do it without them. So please, if you are in the area, um, and hopefully that means you live here and you're, otherwise you're staying home. Um, but when you come to the area in the future, please visit our friends at Black Squid because um, they are awesome. And for future videos, I intend to go back through my catalog of adult science nights. We'll be doing a sourdough bread video because um, everybody seems to be making sourdough bread these days. Uh, we'll also be doing gummy bears and talking about polymers. Um, I may do homemade rubber bouncy balls and discuss elastomers. And finally, one of the best and most fun ones that we had is making ice cream in Ziploc bags while discussing thermodynamics. So that is all something to look forward to. Now let's check in on our milk. You can see it's starting to boil. 
You don't necessarily want it to boil, but we do want it to heat up. And again, I do not have my kitchen thermometer, so we are going to completely and utterly guesstimate how hot this is. Um, these are fun science activities to do with kids at home if you've got kids. Um, this is also a good way to use up some of that milk you might have panic bought earlier. Um, it might be reaching its end of life expiration. Although they do say the fresher the cheese, the, or the fresher the milk, the better the cheese. Um, but perhaps that doesn't have to be the case. Watching grass go and paint dry isn't very much fun, but watching curds and waveform is kind of fun, isn't it? You can see how the milk proteins glom together and the water tries to evacuate. <laughs> the milk has become two separate substances now. We now have the curds, these thick cottage cheesy looking lumps, and we have the whey in that thin yellowish liquid. So I'm stirring it up again. And, sorry, watching out for my mic cord. The next step is to pour the curds and whey into a cloth lined colander. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to move my burner out of the way here. Move my colander there. Make sure y'all can see that. Can you see that? Good, okay. So there is my <laughs> my faux colander and now we're going to pour carefully pull the cheesecloth off. I say carefully because I don't want it to dunk back into that weight that I just drained off. And I'm going to 
squeeze a little bit more of the way out since I think I've already made it a little too firm as it is. It's not going to be a cream cheese style spreadable. <clears throat> so you just drain, squeeze out some more of that way. And then you can shape it. Um, You've got parchment paper. It says to pack the cheese into a paper lined dish to form a wheel and then flip that dish onto a serving platter and peel, peel away the paper. So I am gonna grab a small bowl and do that. And again, making do with what we have here at the library. I don't have parchment paper, but I have wax paper. So I'm going to do that. You can already see it's very cheese-like. I'm going to wrap it like so and let it sit. And then I'm going to go ahead and refrigerate this. Um, you want to refrigerate it so that it can firm up a little bit. Um, and just an, another note on the milk, the whole cow's milk is, is important. It gives you the fat that you need. Um, and you want to make sure that you use cultured butter, buttermilk. It's worth finding it. Um, it's a little bit more acidic and it helps with the coagulation of your curds. So. I'm gonna put this in the refrigerator and then we will get started on the goat cheese. And we're back. All right. I have the fromage facile chilling in the refrigerator here in the break room. And now I'm gonna get started on the Shiva Fresco, which I believe is Spanish for fresh goat. Which sounds gross. Um, but it's goat's milk cheese. So it's actually half goat milk, half cow's milk, cow's milk. Um, I've already poured the goat milk into my pot here and I'm gonna get the temperature turned on. Okay, so the heat is on. We're gonna heat this milk up. Um, so it's a quart, which is one of these little guys of goat milk and a quart of the whole cow's milk, which I will just measure out real quick just to be sure, though I'm pretty sure a half of a half gallon is a quart. Uh, now, if you know somebody who doesn't like goat's milk or doesn't like goat cheese, try this. Even if you're somebody who says, who doesn't like goat cheese, um, try this. The Recipe book says to use uh, unpasteurized or as minimally pasteurized as possible in almost all of the milks. Um, however, you can't find unpasteurized milk in the grocery store. This whole milk is about as close as I can get and it's, it's minimally pasteurized um, from a local dairy farm up in Tillamook County here in Oregon. Um, this goat milk that I found at Safeway is ultra pasteurized, which is not ideal for cheese making. Um, but it's also not, not going to work. Um, the concern with the pasteurized, especially the ultra pasteurized milk is that it won't coagulate and form a curd the way that you want it to, but I've made both Chev and this Shivo Fresco with this goat's milk specifically. And it actually makes a really nice goat cheese. It's, um, it's a finer curd. It's very thin. Um, well, thin isn't the right word, very minuscule, very teeny tiny. Um, and it's a very mild goat flavor. So uh, I was doing some test batches several months ago um, in preparation for my adult science night at the Black Squid, which was supposed to be March 25th. And um, so I was testing out some different cheese recipes on my volunteers that were here. And one volunteer who said that she didn't normally care for goat cheese, really liked the one that I made because it wasn't super goaty and, um, but still had a nice tang. So 
that's something to think about. Okay, so we're gonna heat this milk to 200 degrees. I still don't have my food thermometer because I forgot it at home. So I'm gonna guess, kind of gonna do what I did with the last one, which is let it come up to a nice simmer and let it simmer for a little bit. And then we will add our apple cider vinegar. So the additional ingredients besides the whole milk and the goat milk is apple cider vinegar, salt, and crushed red pepper. Um, you can use whatever pepper you want. You cannot use any pepper. Um, if you like spicy, you could use, you could maybe take like a habanero, half a habanero, um, and chop it up real fine and add it when I'm gonna add the chili peppers and the pepper flakes. Um, or again, you cannot use any of it. That's completely and totally fine. So, I'm gonna go ahead and focus now on our milk. It's fine, kind of like sand. Um, again, I think this is because I use the un, the ultra pasteurized goat milk and not an unpasteurized or minimally pasteurized goat milk. So I, I suppose if you have access to raw milk, use it. Um, I just don't. Okay, so I have cleaned out the milk thing that I used, the measuring cup. That's what I mean, thing. Um, and what I'm going to do, oh, it smells like goat cheese now already. Um, I'm going to strain again into this setup that we've got here. And we're gonna wanna let this drain and strain for about two to five minutes, stirring gently to encourage the curds to release more of their whey. that it's because this is, I'm going to mix the salt and the red pepper flakes into it. Um, I think in there. So, and if you want this to be a firmer cheese, um, what I did at home with my children was I um, wrapped it up in cheesecloth like this. And then um, I took an old, what was it? It was a, I think it was a cream cheese tub. Um, you know, like the, the spreads, the flavored spreads that you can get for bagels and stuff. Um, I think that's what I used. And I placed the cheesecloth line or cheesecloth wrapped 
Shiva fresco in there. And then I I had punctured holes in it with just a paper cut, uh, a paper punch, like a hole punch. Um, and I let more of the whey drain out. I took a, like a maybe a quart size mason jar, um, filled it up with water, like 16 ounce or uh, maybe it was bigger than that. Anyways, I took a mason jar though, and I added that to, um, I filled it up with water and I stuck it on top to help press it a little bit more. And it became a more sliceable cheese, less spreadable, more sliceable. This, however, I think I'm gonna keep a little bit more spreadable. So, what I'm going to do now, that I've pressed out a bunch of the whey. Um, we're at that two to five minute mark. I think I've been doing this for about three minutes. Hope you've enjoyed my banter with myself. Um, so now, I'm going to go ahead and again, very carefully, if this was properly done and on a colander where you didn't have to worry about it necessarily slipping right back into your hot way, um, then you wouldn't have to be this careful. So here we go. I'm gonna do this. Oh, it is very hot though. So I'm gonna just press a little bit more of the way out. Spoon. Okay. It's because I think this one I want spreadable, so I'm not gonna do the formation, like the putting it into a mold. But I also want to get some of the way out. So, okay. Now, hot way to the side. This measuring cup that I'm going to use as a bowl. Bring that out. And look, doesn't that look like? goat cheese that you're used to. Um, okay, so now it's a teaspoon each of salt and of the chili pepper flake. Um, so I'll use my half teaspoon measure again. And we're gonna measure out half, ooh, and that's why we don't measure right over. Half a teaspoon, and then another half a teaspoon. There we go. And then the same with the red chili flakes. Just half a teaspoon. And then I'll use this to mush it all together, stir it in. And you can see it becomes a softer kind of a cheese, like this. If you pressed it into a mold, if you wrapped it in another piece of cheesecloth, made yourself a mold or got a cheese mold um, and pressed it with a little bit of weight for another 15 minutes to a half an hour, you would get something that looks more like this from the recipe. See how that's just a touch firmer looking? Um, but since I don't, I don't feel like dealing with the pressing, I'm just gonna stir this all in. gonna put it in the fridge and there we go that is our shiva fresco um, I'm gonna put it in the fridge and let it chill and firm up a little bit we'll taste test next hello and welcome back okay so it's the next day roughly 24 hours since I made the shiva fresco and the fromage facile, the easy cheese, and the fresh goat. And here they are. As you can see, my coworkers have gotten into them because they're that delicious. Um, I also made a, what I am going to dub as mozzarella. Um, I tried to make mozzarella, and I might plug the video in here at the end. I quickly tell you what I did. Um, as you can see, it does not look like mozzarella. So, um, 
but let's do a little taste test. Anyways, okay, we're gonna start with the fromage facile. That was the first cheese that we made yesterday, the cow's milk cheese, the easy cheese. Um, it is made from whole cow's milk, lemon juice, salt, and buttermilk. Um, it's kind of crumbly. It's not super duper. Um, I, there we go. It's, I mean, it sticks, but it's not super spreadable. Okay. Mm. That's good cheese. Um, so, it's not the most flavorful cheese that you'll make. Um, but I do love that it has just this hint, this little kiss of lemon juice. You can like taste the lemon in it. It's really good. You could easily add in a little bit more salt. You could add in garlic. You could add, <clears throat> I mean, you could flavor it with whatever. <clears throat> it's delicious. Okay, now the Chivo Fresco, the fresh goat. Um, that was made with half goat's milk, half cow's milk apple cider vinegar, salt, and the red pepper flakes. Um, as you can see, this one, can you see? This is a lot more spreadable. Ooh, that is a lot of cheese on one cracker. Um, okay, I let some of it crumble off. All right, let's taste this bad boy. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. it taste? It's just got a really good flavor, just mildly goat cheese flavor. And again, you could add whatever herb, whatever seasoning, whatever flavoring that you want to that cheese to suit your your taste. One of my favorite goat cheeses um, is a lavender goat cheese. It's so delicious. It's called Purple Haze, and I cannot remember the cheese company at the, this moment. Maybe I'll put a little right there that tells you what it is. Um, but it's really good, you know? So add in any herb that tastes good to you. Uh, or there's honeyed goat cheeses that are so good. Um, okay, and now for the mozzarella. Let's try this. Actually, I already have, to be, to be honest. This is very creamy, very spreadable. Again, I don't know what I did wrong. I followed the directions. The only thing I can think of is that maybe I didn't get enough of the whey out before doing the heating process to stretch it and form it into like a ball. Or it, this is because I used the homogenized pasteurized whole milk as opposed to that um, mildly pasteurized milk that I used to make the Chivo Fresco and the um, from much facile, so. But let's try this anyways. This was whole milk, citric acid, which you can find powdered. It, you mix it in with the water. Um, I got mine off of Amazon, but there's a good chance you could find yours uh, at your local grocery store at, down where they have canning supplies, like with the sure gel and the, the pectins and stuff, because it's used for that. It might also be down in the cleaning aisle because it's good for, for cleaning, um, <clears throat> like to add to laundry and stuff. So this was whole milk, citric acid, rennet, um, vegetable rennet, which uh, most of the online cheese recipes that I found called for tablets, I bought liquid. They function similarly. If it calls for half a tablet of the, half of it, sorry. If it calls for half a tablet dissolved in water, then you do half a teaspoon and, and dilute, dilute it in water. Um, so let's taste. See how delicious and creamy that is? I mean, mm, don't you want some? It is good. Oh, and there's salt in this. Um, it kind of tastes like mozzarella, but like if mozzarella and cream cheese had a baby. I don't know. Like I said, I'm calling it mozzarella. I don't know what I did wrong, but it's not bad. I don't hate it. I ain't mad at it. Um, isn't that what the kids say? So 
in conclusion, the process of making cheese is one of the oldest forms of microbiology out there. Nobody knows when it first started, for sure, like there's no documented record, but you need enzymes, you need milk, um, and you need salt. And depending on the kind of cheese you're making, you might need a little bit of extra help in the form of a bacteria. Um, but yeah, make this stuff at home. If you've got extra milk lying around, um, make it. Make some cheese. If you have access to raw milk, make some cheese. Um, just make the cheese, darn it. It's good. It's not cheap, necessarily. It's not going to be any cheaper than making, like, than buying it unfortunately, but it's good, it's tasty. Have a cheese party in your home, share recipes with your family, and enjoy. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. That feels weird to say. Um, and don't forget to support your local libraries.